You may have heard that business and politics just don't mix. But tell that to David Siegel, the founder and CEO of Westgate Resorts. Gawker discovered that the billionaire owner of a national timeshare company and resort developer sent an email to his employees that essentially threatened them with mass layoffs if President Obama won re-election in November. The email from Siegel to his employees begins as a pep talk, but very quickly gets political. He says, quote, the economy doesn't currently pose a threat to your job. What does threaten your job, however, is another four years of the same presidential administration. Of course, as your employer, I can't tell you whom to vote for, and I certainly wouldn't interfere with your right to vote for whomever you choose. In fact, I encourage you to vote for whomever you think will serve your interests best. It's a story RT correspondent Nicholas O'Donovan has been looking into. He joins us live from our studios in Miami, Florida. Hey there, Nicholas. Uh, the inference, of course, is that the employees' best interests are served by a Romney administration. But sending an email like this is pretty shocking. Uh, what are people in Florida saying about this? Well, there is still no official reaction down here in Florida for the moment. But this is what 7,000 workers at the Westgate Resorts saw when they opened their office email on Monday morning. It's an email from their boss, as you said, David Siegel, letting them know that if they vote for Obama, they could lose their jobs. So I'm pretty sure that they had a priceless, priceless reaction to the email. As we said, David Siegel is the billionaire CEO of uh, Westgate Resorts, a huge national timeshare company and one of the largest resort developers in the world. He sent a surprise and email to his employees on Monday threatening them with losing their jobs if Barack Obama got re-elected. And Siegel's, company, Obama, it, Siegel's yeah. company is based in Orlando, Florida, in the middle of, uh, I'm sure, as you know, what is a very big battleground area of a swing state. Uh, we're less than a month away from the election. Do you think this email could ultimately make a difference on November 6th? Well, yes, as you say, Mr. Siegel's company is, is based in Orange County, which is one of the Democratic leaning counties here in central Florida. It voted for Barack Obama 59% to 40% in 2008. And as we said, David Siegel is based in Florida. And this is obviously not a coincidence. In the 2008 election, Obama won the state with a very narrow 50.9% of votes. Uh, and it is always tight down here in Florida. And every vote counts. Therefore, it is also no coincidence that the last presidential debate will also take place here in Boca Raton, Florida. Candidates know it and businessmen know it down here in Florida. The yeah, it's state no, it's could no fair. hold the key. You get all the yeah, excitement well, the, there. Absolutely. We know that the state, Florida, could hold the key to the White House in the next election. Well, and in fact, it's very interesting because Mr. Siegel says he's actually done this before. He uh, seems he to take credit for George W. Bush's victory over Al Gore in 2000. That's when he apparently had managers ask his then 8,000 employees about their political affiliation. Uh, tell us about what happened in that case. Well, the, the first thing we have to say, you said 8,000 employees, now there's only 7,000. Obviously, th something's going wrong in his company. But as you say, it's not the first time that Siegel is actively involved in a campaign. In fact, the Florida, the Florida real estate businessman claims he was, as you said, personally responsible for George W. Bush's 2000 presidential victory. Well, 12 years ago, he used similar tactics tactics to influence his employees during the 2000 presidential election campaign. He admitted, quote, whenever I saw a negative article about Al Gore, I put it in with the paychecks of my employees, end quote. After that, he said he couldn't imagine, obviously, that uh, Bush would win by only 527 votes. He also admits that his tactics for helping Bush win may not necessarily have been legal. So even if it's still surprising, I'm sure his 7,000 employees saw it coming. 
Yeah, you know, he, I think he also told uh, somebody that he found out the political affiliation of his employees, and if they were Republican, uh, he helps them register to vote, and if they were Democrats... He, he, he would make sure they get to the polls, yes. That's yeah. exactly what he said. I mean, it, that's, this to me, uh, Jonathan, really is, is shocking, but uh, the, the bottom line is uh, it's important that we get the story out there. Um, wondering if there are any similar incidents. There is. Siegel isn't the first CEO to push his political preferences onto his employees. Bob Murray, CEO of coal company, Murray Energy, <laughs> allegedly uh, persuaded his employees to donate money to the Romney campaign. Uh, Murray Energy workers have also accused the company of forcing them to participate in pro-Romney rallies and uh, gave up days of worth, uh, worth of pay and uh, they could face the possibility of getting fired if they didn't. But we have left the, the best for last. Siegel ends his email saying, my motivation to work and to provide jobs will be destroyed, as he said, and with it, so will your opportunities. If that happens, you can find me in the Caribbean, sitting in the beach under a palm tree, <laughs> retired and with no employees to worry about. So we will have to wait till November the 6th to see if Mr. Siegel goes for a long holiday or if he stays if he's in his 90,000 square foot palace. Uh, so interesting there, Nick Nicholas. I'm just, uh, it's just crazy uh, that somebody can really influence or have, a, you know, any sort of um, influence, I guess, with uh, the, the power of a keystroke. Very, very interesting. RT correspondent Nicholas O'Donovan joining us from Miami.